When I put the hood on, the hood fits like that. And because the frame was bent right here, down, it sagged down, that when we jacked it back up, it brought this back to there. So now the line is straight. Before, it was like that. And you couldn't, you couldn't latch these because the frame had to sag down. So I tried by, under, there's a mount here, and a, there's three mounts on the side. By shimming those up to get this cap to lean back a little bit, thinking that it was too close here. But the reason is you're a long beam, and when you do that, the front end goes down and the back end goes down. And that, so that's brought it back really close to what it all belongs at. The top edge of the frame goes all the way back, is flat on top from factory. On the bottom, it drops down and goes back. So you can't put a straight edge and check it. So you have to use those hanging instruments to make sure that the frame is straight all the way back. And once we put those on, we could see that the frame was sagging. And so he jacked it up so it was jacked up higher and then let off. And when it released, then it ended up flat after doing it three times to make sure just a little bit at a time. So we figured there was three quarters of an inch. At this point, the car was down three quarters of an inch. And now it's up flat. Hi, I'm, I'm John Hash. I've been dealing with Model A's for 40 some years now. And over the years, I've straightened a lot of frames. This, this whole system is designed for doing it with the body, all the sheet metal in place. You do it from under the car. We did it this way so you can see how it's kind of under the car, it's tough to show exactly what you're doing. You have your cross, you have gauges, frame gauges hanging down from the frame. It's very critical that the height from the top of the frame to your gauge, whatever you're gonna use for a gauge, they all have to be the same exact height from the top of the frame to, the, to your gauge. And you have three points, one, one in the front, one in the middle, right at the rear, mo or rear motor mount because that's where they band, and then one in the rear. And keep in mind that don't try to line them up. You wanna measure them from the top of the frame and make sure that they are exactly the same height. There are six points, three on each side. Then you can start playing with the frame as far as to get it straight to line it up. That's, that part is very critical. What I did with this is I, I made a bracket that bolts on to the front shock bolt, right where the shock bolt bolts in. I made a bracket that bolts into them holes. I made this section here that encases the frame rail inside on the bottom flange and the, and the web in the, in the back so I don't damage the frame at all. And so then when you start, you get everything set up. I like my beam. The way I've got it set up is so it's not on the floor. You don't want to be, you get your chassis set in here. You want to make sure that your beam is off the floor because when you start jacking it, if it's on the floor, you're going to lift your frame up. You're going to lift everything up, and pretty soon you're going to be chasing it around the floor or falling off the jack stands. So I suspend the beam underneath, and you don't have to ha be fancy like this beam. There's other things you can use, or I beam or whatever. Some guys use uh, four by sixes. Uh, I just happen to have this, this unit, and that's the way I like to do it, and I've done quite a few of them. So then you start jacking the frame once you get everything in line. You look, we, we got a laser set up on this one where you can see where they're at. So we're going over the top of all three of them and you want to make sure that 
as you come up. And they're normally the Model A frame bends. When they sag, they sag at the rear motor mount. So that's where you want to bring it back up. And so you start jacking it and you keep an eye on, if, you, if you're lucky enough to have a laser, you can set it up the way we did here, or you can even just eyeball it and eyeball uh, all three. They don't have to be flat bar like I got here. You can make them round however you want, but they need to lay flat so that you can, you can see all three of them. You want all three to line up. And so then you end up jacking, and as you jack it up, you have to go past center, but be careful. As you go past center, just wait a couple minutes, let it off, see where it is, do it again, let it off, because you can go too far. And so you want to do a little increments at a time. It doesn't take a whole lot. It, that's, that is the weakest part of a Model A frame is right at the rear motor mounts because they got them big holes in there. And you have the weight of the motor sitting in that spot. You have the weight of the body sitting in that spot. And if they run into a ditch or something, that's where they all bend. So it's, it doesn't take a whole lot to straighten them back out. Now, yeah, this, this is a 10 ton porta power here first. And uh, this one is, is air operated. It just makes it a lot better, a lot easier for me. I don't have to pump so much. And all you gotta do is step on the pedal. As you step on the pedal, you'll hear that pumping. And what it's doing is that porta power is coming up. And you just keep going and it, it'll give you the full 10 ton. So then to release it, you just step on, you step your foot on the other side and it releases it. Kind of really makes it nice. Uh, I have the, the hand pumps and stuff here too, but uh, this one just makes it a lot nicer to deal with. So, And it makes it nice and easy. So. Now you notice that how low the center beam is. And as I jack it up, it's going to come into, once that line comes into itself, As it comes up, you'll notice that I'll bring it up a little bit. Okay, now that's where we want it to end up. Okay, so in order to get there, what we have to do is we have to go past it. Now this is where it gets a little tricky. Okay. Now, one other thing I'll bring up is on pushing on the frame, I don't like to Straighten the frame if it doesn't have a rear motor mount in it, a factory type motor rear motor mount. I don't like doing it with floater motors, depending on how much I got to push on it. Because there's nothing there to protect that lower flange if you don't have the motor mount in there. Also, remember that your flywheel housing is actually a cross member. And if it's all bolted in there, that's fine. But you worry about maybe damaging the lower flange and stuff if you're only pushing on that. If you got a motor mount in there, it's backing it up. It's got a rubber insulator underneath it, but it still backs it up. Yeah. It, it all depends on how much your frame is off, your rails are off, to do you need to unbolt your body or not. Uh, if it's just a little bit, normally you don't need to. I've done them both ways. If it's bad, at least take all the, bolt, all the nuts off the bolts. You can leave your body on there, but you don't want to be pulling too much on, pushing too much on this because it will distort your body a little bit and pretty soon your doors won't close. So if you got your doors that are open and closing good, just take the nuts off the bolts. So that way your body can float up there and you can push on the frame. I... There's a couple, that it kind of, normally, this exhaust pipe, is on, it, it's way too high. That's not normally where it goes. It's supposed to be on the bottom flange. And so normally I have two of these clamps and I put one on this side too, because what that doing is it's getting hold of the flange and or getting hold of the web inside the frame. Mm -hmm. What I'm doing is I'm pinching it and it, this plate actually, it's got a hook on the top of it. You don't notice it. See the radius here? I made a deal there. So when it, when you tighten that up, it's got a hold of this up here too. So it's pulling, when you're pulling down on it, and, uh, you know, a lot of thinking went into that, trying to figure out, you know, because I did it a couple different ways over the years and I didn't like it. 
and it was really scary. But this one here, you, you can't hurt it. You can't hurt that bracket. So.